Hello, this is Baptiste from Chris. Today, I'm going to show you how you can automatically manage your customer support during weekend. Let's get down to it. First, we are going to click on new scenario. Chris provides existing scenarios, especially the weekend responder, which is pretty similar to what we are going to do today. But that's too easy. We're going to create one from scratch. The first step is going to be to create a user event match. So we click on plus event and then user message matches. Here we're going to use a star. It means that any message is going to trigger our chatbot. We can also select different messaging channels such as Messenger, WhatsApp and Instagram. We're going to change this with the condition if the support is not available. So we click on condition and then support is available. Now we're going to configure this so the chatbot can be triggered if the support is away like this. And now we can send a message. So we click on plus, action, send message, and text message. Let's edit the message. Now we're going to tweak our configuration a little bit and use drag and drop. So we can drag and drop conditions. What we want to do is to do a condition based on the current day. So we're going to use the block current day like this. And we drag it. And we're going to use Saturday and Sunday. So that means that our block is going to be triggered during the weekends. Now we are going to do a new block for the rest of the week. So we're going to drag a new block for current day. And we are going to select from Monday to Friday. Like this. And you can link it. Now we are going to do a new condition so we can limit our chatbot execution during specific hours of the day. So we're going to do it from midnight to 8 a.m. Then we're going to drag a new block so we can do a new check. Especially if you want to do a new check from 7 p.m. to midnight. So we're going to select 7 p.m. to midnight, like this. And now we can link those two new blocks to the text block. Now we can tweak things a little bit and ask our user for his email. So we're going to click on action, send message, and then field message. We're going to configure this block so we can ask an email instead. And we're going to replace the placeholder as well. Finally, we're going to require the user to complete the input. Then we're going to click on add input action and we're going to configure this block so we can memorize the email. And then we're going to click on plus action, update user, and update user email and we reuse the email and then we can send a text message. Then we're going to combine this with a picker message. So action, send message, picker message. Picker messages are actually a list of buttons. Then once the user clicks on one of those buttons, it will execute something. Let's do your own buttons. So we're going to do one for accounting, then another one for other issues. And finally, we're going to add a different button, which is going to be for delivery. And now we can combine three different actions. So it's going to execute one branch when the user clicks on one of those choices. Now let's save our scenario and let's test it. So we're going to send a message. It asks for our email. And then it displays three choices. On this button, it does nothing because we need to chain it with an action. So we're going to send a text message here, a different one for order issues. So this is going to be choice one, choice two. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't hesitate to subscribe to our YouTube channel to not miss any tips and tricks about CRISP.